Okay, so a word on Bishalach that I heard over Shabbos, which I thought was very good, so I'll share it with you. Um, so uh, on Shabbos, a, um, a neighbor of mine, called, and we were we overlapped in Yeshiva, it was Rabbi David Baraz, um, he asked the following. He said, everyone asked the question, how could it be that the Jews so quickly after Yom Suf, where they says, Vaminu Bashem Moshe Avdo, it takes, you know, three days for them to be whining again and then again and, no, and then no. again. What? They're no longer um, So everyone asks, like, how did that happen? But he says, really, he, the question you have to ask is different. Besides for the question about the Jews, you've got to ask the question about God. What is he doing? I mean, why exactly does God do this? Why does he put them in these situations? You know, he's leading them into the desert. It's, it, it would be nice if there was water and they didn't have to panic after 72 hours. Water, um, why didn't he prophylactically deal with the problem and, uh, and provide water? Why did he, he make it that they would have to panic and daven and everything that happened? Again, three times just in Bishalach. Right, water, food, water. Um, so what he suggested is as follows. Um, what is the pasuk that ends that first unit, right, that first unit of the lack of water in, um, in Mara? Is that about the wood? Good. Right, this is the closing pasuk in which God explains the theological lesson they're supposed to gain from this incident. And that has to be the key to the story. Vayomer. If you listen to the mitzvot, so then all the illnesses that I gave you in the mitzvot shall not happen to you, that I gave to the mitzvot rather, shall not be on you, because I am God, your healer. So what, uh, what he argued was that this is the key. And if you think for a moment about the challenges that the Jews face, you will realize that they are essentially, many of them are, the makot in potential, which the only thing that prevents them from being a maka is God. So let's take the first one. The first test that he gives them is lack of water. Lack of water. And how does Moshe solve it? And he throws a stick in. Well, no, he talks to God. And God says throw a stick in. But this good. doesn't like okay, let's just stick this doesn't really do anything. Very good. He said, does this remind you of anything? Dumb. Dumb. Very good. Right? That there is no water, there's no water to drink. But there the problem was caused by the stick. Right? By hitting the water with the stick. That's how the, it was caused. And here, there's lack of water, or not lack of water, there's undrinkable water. Right? It's actually very precise. It's not that there was no water. Here there's actually water, it's just undrinkable water, just like by Dam. But there, it was caused by the, by the stick, by hitting it with a stick. And here, it's solved by throwing a stick in. Um, and Hashem says, the message is, well, if you keep the mitzvot, so then, you won't get the mock of Mitzrayim. So he argues that this is the point. That Hashem basically brings these makot in potential and says the difference between you getting hit by the makot and not is if you keep the Torah, I will keep the makot away from you. And if not, well, I won't. So if you look for some other examples of this, um, he gave a, a second example of this he noted was Choshech. Um, he said in the Mon Parsha you have certain resonances to the Choshech um, unit um, where in the Choshech what was the curse? The curse of Choshech was not just that it was darkness but what did the Pukim say? They couldn't move. Right? That no one could move, no one could leave. Or they were stuck. In the Mun, what does Hashem say about Mun on Shabbos? Yeah, but how is it actually phrased in the Psukim? 
No, what does he actually say? Do not go out. Thank you. Right? On Shabbos, there'll be a double portion. On Friday, there'll be a dov- double portion. And therefore, you won't have to go out. And in fact, it is prohibited for you to go out. Um, so we can't leave our house. C- correct. That, that's exactly it. Um, um, so you have this parallel that, right, on, it's here, it's, um, right, they are stuck by halacha. But is it a bracha or a klala? Right, it's a bracha. You, you don't have to go out, and therefore I forbid you from going out because I've provided with everything you need. And he said it's more than that. If you aren't, if that's not enough for you, what is the only malacha that is explicit in the Torah? Uh, oh, right. Yeah, that you can't have fire, you can't create light. But again, it's not a klala, it's a bracha, right? It's part of the mitzvah of Shabbos. And I think if you look through it, you'll find that this theme comes up several other times. Certain of them are very clear. So, Makkah Bechor is actually, I think, the clearest, where Hashem immediately after Makkah Bechor tells you that there's a mitzvah. Which is, right, I killed all the firstborns of the Egyptians, and amongst the Jews, you need pidyon haben kili chol bechor because I didn't kill the bechor in Mitzrayim of the Jews, and therefore I've replaced that with a mitzvah. They are mine, and now you have to be poda, right? So, in place of killing them, I give you a mitzvah where you redeem your child, right? And all the mitzvah that's attached to that. And here you have choshech, you have dam. Um, what he didn't mention, though, I'll, I'll just end with this, is that you would expect, though, that what would happen if you, let's say, don't keep the Torah, then you would expect Dafka to have Makot Mitzrayim. Can you think of any examples like that? Um, I mean, people yelled at Elisha Hanavi and he sent bears after Well, that's him. not... Particularly Makot Mitzrayim, but I mean, can you think of Makot Mitzrayim? Kind of like, uh, what's the word? Aru. Yeah. Maybe. It's only for 42 children. I mean, come on. Uh, uh, it's only for 42 children. <laughs> <laughs> there are so let's, let's just try in Chumash. Let's just try in Chumash. It was preceded by basically what happened down there. Oh uh, yeah, okay, the, okay, yeah. A bunch of children were like, "Hey." So I, I'll, I'll, I'll give one that I was thinking about. There, there definitely are others. Um, when the the case of the nechashim, mm. right? The nechashim, right? Yes, exactly. What are we comparing right? to? Right, that the snakes, right? This the nachash, the tanin. You know, the first of oh, the thing. we're counting that as one of the makot. Or whatever. It's one of the first things that is. One I mean, of the yes, miracles. Are, the miracles, according to some, it is that one of the makot, but it doesn't really matter. Maka, not maka, it doesn't really matter, right? Where you have these these snakes that are attacking, and they are the again. It's the reason I'm thinking of that image is just because it's very, very in your face. The snakes are attacking them and biting them and killing them, right? Unless they. Look up at the snake, a snake, which according to Chazal means if they look up at the snake and look at Shamayim. Right, it's low and nachash meimet, low meimet mechaya. Right, this is the commission on Rosh Hashanah. No, 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 it was, but it was. The point wasn't looking at the staff that was shaped like the snake. It was if they looked, uh, if that made them look up towards Shamayim. That's how the mission understands it. So then it would save them. But the Mishnah is telling you the point is that the snakes will kill you unless you believe in God, because they won't. Right, and that stick on a staff should be very ev- evocative of that first image when Paro. It, it meets Moshe again. I mean, he met him before. You know, they were brothers. You know, whatever. But re meets him. Um, so, so I think it is. It is. Um, it's something to think about. That the uh, the reason this is here is because Hashem is trying to drive home again the point that He will protect them from makot and makot like things, but only if they distinguish themselves in actions from the Egyptians. If they don't, well then. I will visit the plagues of Egypt upon you as well, um, which you know is half comforting, half scary. Which I'm is not the point. Thanks, Okay, go ahead, guys.